All right, y'all. Greetings. So, set my guava bless up. <laughs> I am listening to Brother Umar. Let me see if I can get myself in here a little better. I am listening. I'm listening to Brother Umar Johnson here. Let me see if I can show you that. Yeah, you're going to see a whole bunch of mess on my dress, and you can't. Anyway, I had to put this down a little bit. And you see, I don't know what you can see there. Let's see. Uh, let's see if we can't tighten it up and, and tighten it up in there. And anyway, I am listening to brother Umar Johnson. <laughs> I'm over here. Okay. This is what happens when you have to sort of be the, see my neck, <laughs> you have to be the camera person, uh, you know, everything, the all around person. That's me. So, I'm listening to some clips from brother Umar Johnson's seminar for women only. <laughs> Here you go. How about if I get how about if I put my red, black, and green in my hands too, the way he has. Um, it's a, you know, a, a, a handkerchief. He has his red, black, and green handkerchief. Now let me tell y'all something. I am not wearing one of those contraptions right now. And I am very conscientious about that fact. And I suspect you know, when I look at myself and look at this um, video, I'm likely to begin to critique it ungodly. At any rate, um, I'm listening to Umar's seminar that he gave in February of 11, oh, you know, February this year in Brooklyn, New York, the seminar for women only. And the clip, the piece that I just looked at, it's like almost three minutes into a seven and a half minute clip and he first talked about um, the why uh, baby daddies don't marry their moms and it's like take this off I don't know that I want to listen to a whole lot more because I'm likely to become extremely agitated and stirred up it is likely to stir up my fire it's going to add log to the fire that is already burning in me. And because I am the all-around person for me, that means that I am also responsible for tending my fire. <laughs> oh, yes, that's all I wanted it was to chance to be a woman with equal rights and opportunities for me. Darkness holds me down. And for me as an African descendant, the dark the darkness that holds me down happens to be very white and very bright. And as I listen to Umar's presentation to the women, to the sistren, um, it's clear to me that, you know, in part, he is using the whiteness to hold me down as a woman of African descent because he is talking about those personality disorders without thus far. I have not heard him talk about the root causes for those quote unquote disorders. <laughs> He's not focused on, he's focused on the symptoms and the signs, but he's not focused on the root causes. I do talk about a need to identify the signs, symptoms, and solutions to traumatic stress, yet for me, those solutions are embedded in an understanding of the root causes of the disorder or the problem for African descendants. And thus far, as I listen to Umar, I do not hear him um, really at, in this seminar at this particular point out of the clips that I'm hearing because I'm not buying the DVD. 
I am not buying the DVD. I'm not buying shit from African descendants at this point at all. And I'm saying that, and I know the likelihood that in the next couple of days when I go to purchase any specific item that I want, I'm likely to go to an African descendant. But generally speaking, I'm not buying shit from African descendants at this point. Especially not those in the conscious quote unquote community. And if you want to know why, ask me and I'll talk some more about why and what that means for me. So at any rate, as he is talking about um, the various um, the disorders as identified by European descendants in their Bible, the DSM, it is without know your non -nego know that you're non negotiable. He he suggests to the women that when they meet a man they should put out their non negotiables. I have to wonder what is non-negotiable for many sisters and what that means for him as a brethren. Yet at any rate, it's interesting because, you know, today's blog talk uh, meeting, our, you know, episode in Abana's world today, did focus on my reaction and response to um, a brother who came at me in a way that was unacceptable, lightly put. As I extended to him my thoughts and feelings about a particular topic, his response to that triggered a response from me. And in large part, what I'm saying to the brother is this is a, a particular area that's non-fucking negotiable. As a woman of African descent, I have a right to speak and to share what the fuck stop I have seen and experienced and what I have come to know in the world. And I can do that without the backing of European standards for qualifying what I see and hear myself. You know, I, I don't have to do that with their backing and their qualifier. I don't have to use their qualifiers for the knowledge that I have as a woman of African descent. It's non-flipping negotiable. And so he suggests that women put out their non-negotiables. And based on my experience with doing that and what the typical response is, it's like, cool. So what that means is that with that particular brother, I will... Um, know that there's no building with him because he is not able to respect my non-negotiable. And thus far, for me, I have not found or connected with very many men of African descent who are able to respect, respect my non-negotiable. What is non-negotiable for me is that I can and will share my voice. I can and will share what I see and what I hear. I can speak about those evils. Now, I am questioning myself right now in terms of how much of Umar I'm going to continue to listen to right now um, or not. And so as I listen to him, I want to respond because you know what, I really want to, there's a part of me, there's a small part of me that wants to engage um, Brother Umar in dialogue and conversation in, with an eye towards resolution. 
resolving the shit that exists in he and I relationship. Yet it has his behaviors towards me has made it clear that he is not ready, able, or willing to clean this shit up. The shit that exists and creates a barrier between he and I. Sad, sad for me to say, and at the same time, it is very much the reality for me. And the only way that there can be some resolution for me is if he chose to engage in dialogue and conversation with me to some help me to see what I see is shit right now. If it's not shit, then, you know, I need his input in that for clarity see and thus far that has not been forthcoming and trust me I have attempted on many on a, on a couple of different occasions till next time coming to you from the recovery room uh, racism not anonymous I am Susabana